On March 11, 2005, Kevin Berthia hit rock bottom. He decided to come here to the Golden Gate Bridge to end his life. What happened that day on this bridge changed his life forever. I was going through so many different things internally. Um, I was just become a new father, just recently lost my job. Um, just, it was so many different things. All the things I didn't handle in my life end up coming up on that day, March 11, 2005, and I felt like I didn't have a choice. Uh, I was tired of living a lie. I was tired of, you know, keeping this mask on, acting like everything was fine when everything wasn't okay. And I just got overwhelmed that day. I didn't see, I didn't see a way out. Berthia grew up in Oakland and had never been to the Golden Gate Bridge. He didn't even know how to get here and had to ask for directions. That was banking on whoever I asked for directions. They would look at me and say, you know, why do you want to go? Because part of me wanted to tell why I wanted to go. And part of me needed to know I needed to go, but the other part really, really wanted to just say why I wanted to be there, that I was just tired of living a lie. And did anyone ask? Nobody ever asked. California Highway Patrol Officer Kevin Briggs, who became known as the guardian of the Golden Gate Bridge, spotted Berthia just as he jumped over the railing. If I had 50-foot hands to reach out and grab him, that's what I felt like. But the only thing I could do was yell something to him. And I can't remember what I yelled, but I yelled. And, and he reached out and caught that rail, swung around, hit it. But I didn't know that he had reached out and caught it. I thought he was gone. What happened next is captured in this haunting photo. For 92 minutes, they talked. Started at the age of five and I worked myself up, up to the age of 22. He learned about 17 years of my pain, uh, my heartache, the things that I wanted to just tell people, the things that I was going through, the things that were overwhelming me, the things that really brought me to the bridge. He was a complete stranger. Yeah. What made you decide to just open up to him? It was something about who he was. It was the compassion. You have to understand something. I never opened my eyes once. I never knew Sergeant Briggs was a cop or I never, I never knew he was white. So this whole conversation that we had for 92 minutes, I never knew anything about him. I thought he was a, a, just a compassionate bystander. If I would open my eyes, conversation probably would have been a little different because where I'm from, Oakland, California, my identity, my, my look at how I looked at law enforcement at the time was, was completely different from how I look at law enforcement now. So it was just something about his voice. It's just. It's just he just wouldn't give up. He made me feel like if we had to talk for nine, ten hours, ten days, he would just be willing to listen. And that's what he was looking for, was somebody to listen to him. My job was what could I tell him to make him want to come back over? What did he tell me that I could take in? So I kept thinking about this. I go, his child, pretty much for any parent. So I started talking about his child more. Tell me more and more and more about her. Eventually, Officer Briggs and another officer helped Berthia back over the railing and took him to the hospital. Eight years later, the two reconnected when Berthia was asked to give Officer Briggs a public service award in New York. And that's when Berthia says Officer Briggs saved his life again. By 2013, I was up to 22 failed suicide attempts. So when I met Officer Briggs um, at that New York Lifesavers Theater, it was literally after 222 failed suicide attempts and me trying to figure out how I was going to get myself out of pain again. And meeting him just kind of revamped me to help me see that I really, really needed to live. And I had a reason to live after I told my story there in New York. That night, Berthia realized he wasn't alone and telling his story on stage helped other people. Now Berthia is a public speaker and a passionate advocate for suicide prevention and started the Kevin Berthia Foundation. You got to realize my whole life I felt like I was alone. I'm, I'm an African-American man coming from an African-American community who doesn't talk about, you know, depression or mental health or suicide prevention. So, I mean, I didn't even know that, that what I had. I mean, I didn't know what I was up against. We never had conversations. We never had talks about it. So I just felt like I was different. So to get to that, you know, to get to New York and finally get to talk about something openly and be vulnerable and be honest and people embrace me, it was just, it was life changing. Officer Briggs retired from the CHP in 2013 after responding to hundreds of suicide calls on the Golden Gate Bridge. Officer Briggs is now a mental health and suicide prevention speaker. The look in people's eyes when I would look at them when they were over the rail was, you know, the desperate. I could see some hope. They wanted to live, but they didn't know how, and they were just so tired of living in the agony. That's what really drove me to want to do this job better. Officer Briggs and Berthia say they might come from two different backgrounds, but they were brought to this bridge that day for a reason. And now they both use that story to save lives by letting people know there is hope and help. Lisa Chan, KCBS.